Goedemorgen, Grot Wals. Good morning, Great Wals. Ons gaan vandaag aan met ons kort verhaal. We continuing with our short story. Ons um, gaan nou so die voorlaaste deelkie doen. En dan gaan ons morgen die laaste paar bladzijde doen. Kom ons gaan aan. So, ons was nou op, aan die einde van gister, was ons bezig, um, nog steeds voor Len, bezig was om die lijk te probeer wegsteek. He was trying to just hide the body and do something to help Robbie. So that's where we are going on today. Voor my tweede kans, my Robbie de Week in te ring, was ek een man van klein sondes. Die soort wat gerationaliseer en sou dit nodig wees glibberig as mense gefouta afgemaak kon word. Die onbeduidende presentatiepunte waarmee ek my kunstenaars bedrieg het, was omdat ek die extra tree vir hulle gegeen het. Dit het my toegekom. Die net nou en dan ontrouwheid aan my gewese vrou, want ons het mekaar ontgroei. Zij het my nie verstaan nie. Die groter skuld vir die liekserhuis en blinkermotor, omdat ek een professionele stelling van sukses moes maak, so dat ek beter sangers kon lok. Let's have a look at the English translation. Before my second chance, my Robbie de Vier turning point, I was a man of small sins. So that means he only did little things wrong. The kind that could be rationalized and if needed could be chalked up to human error. The insignificant percentage points with which I cheated my artists were because I walked the extra mile for them. I was entitled to it. So basically he's saying that he stole a little bit from his clients, but um, that it was fine because he did a lot of things for them. The only now and again infidelity to my ex-wife, so he cheated on his ex-wife, because we had outgrown each other. So you can see he rationalizes everything he does wrong. She didn't understand me. The bigger debt for the more luxurious house and shinier car because I needed to make a professional statement of success so that I could attract better singers. So you can see he just basically rationalizes everything he does. En toe ek alles verloor, het ek lang en dikvels gevroeg oor die waarom. Ek het met die voordeel van retrospect en die eerlijkheid van selverweid besef ek was eenvoudig nie mans genoeg vir die groot misdaad, die brave misstap nie. Ek was een bykie van een lafwaard, daarom dat ek op pad terug na die hotel wankel. So obviously now he's on his way back from the, um, from the field where he buried this body. So he's starting to doubt now whether he's doing the right thing. Dit oorweeg om vir Robbie te gaan sê ek is jammer, maar ons sal die polisie moet laat kom. Ons sal die risiko moet loop sy loopbaan op die spel moet plaas, want ek sien die kans nie. Om van een lyk ons laat te raak, is een misdrijf wat groter as, as ek. Dit verg een dapperder mens. Ok, let's have a look. And when I lost everything, I struggled often and long about the why, so he wondered why. I had with the advantage of retrospect and the honesty of regret realized that I was simply not man enough for big crime, the brave misstep. I was a bit of a coward which is why on my way back to the hotel, I wavered. Considered it to go tell Robbie, I'm sorry, but we will have to let the police come. We'll have to take the risk, put his career on the line, because I wasn't up to it. To get rid of a body was a crime bigger than I was. It required a braver person. So you can see now something about the character of Len. Len is iemand wat alles rationaliseer. He rationalizes everything, but he still has a line, a moral line. Hy het a line wat hy nie wil oorsteek nie. Hy dink, dit is net te erg om van een like ons laat erop, maar natuurlijk het hy dit nou klaar gedoen. He's already done it. Maar ek doen dit nie. Want ek kom elke keer by die selfde slot som. Ons lot is onlosmaakbaar verstrengel. Een skandal sal, sal hierdie in my laaste en verbeerde kans verander. Die stank sal makkelijker aan my kleef, want ek is reeds gebrandmerk. Die media sal die verlede gaan opdiep. My naam sal in die sip onderskrifte staan. But I don't do it. This is now calling the police, ne? Because every time I come to the same conclusion, our fates are inextricably intertwined. So, in other words, if Robbie goes down, Lynn goes down with him. The scandal would change this into my last and missed opportunity. The stench will cling to me more easily because I have already been branded. The media will dig up my past. My name will be written in the subheadings. Ons gaan aan. Ek krij die volkswaag en kerry by die hotel. Ek sit eers achter die stierwiel, met die lichtverzorger aan en Google harde ware winkels op my phone. Dan rai ek na die Boulders Warehouse op die hoek van Kiri en Pasteur in General de Wet, op soek na een tas of een kus wat groot genoeg sal wees vir een like. 
I find the Volkswagen Caddy at the hotel. At first, I sit behind the steering wheel with the aircon on and Google hardware shops on my phone. Then I drive to the builder's warehouse on the corner of Curie and Pasteur in General de Vet, searching for a suitcase or a chest that will be big enough for a body. Good wag, want hulle maak eers 9 uur oop. Ek sit en staar na die Caddy se digitale horloosie, oorbewus van my spaartijd. Nou net meer as 2 ure weg. Ek deurdink die proces wat voorlet jyste nacht en maak my inkoopie lees. I have to wait, because I only open at 9 o'clock. I sit and stare at the caddy's digital watch, overly aware of my deadline. So remember, the cleaning ladies are coming at 11. So he has to get rid of the body before then. Now just over two hours away, I think about the process in front of me, against my will, and make my shopping list. Eindelijk gaan die dere oop. Ek is die eerste klient om in te stap. Ek bekyk die plastiek ammunisiekiste, die reeks koelbokse, een komposthouwer en vullestromme. Niks is groot genoeg vir een gemiddelde vrou se lewelose lichaam nie. Ek kry dit in die kombuisafdeling, een dubbel deur kassie. Van die soort wat onder een waspak kom, ek koop een kruierstrolie, een graaf, een rol dik zwaar plastiek en maskeerband. Finally, the doors open. I'm the first client to walk in. I examine the plastic ammunition cases, the range of cooler boxes, a composting bin and garbage bins. Nothing is big enough for the average woman's lifeless body. I find it in the kitchen section. A double door cupboard, the kind that goes under the sink. I buy a folding nose trolley, a shovel, a roll of thick black plastic and masking tape. Um, net vir ingeval, jylle nie weet hoe die trolley lyk net, ek veel hier so prentje gesit, so this is the kind of trolley that he buys. Because obviously he's not going to be able to lift this cupboard with a body in it on his own. Let's continue. Ek raak bewis van die serialiteit van wa waarmee ek bezig is. A dwaal toestand, my breinse manier om die oorweldigende spanning te hanteer. Ek gaan plaas die kassie in die caddy, maak die deur toe en kamoefleer die kassie met die plastiek en die maskeerband. Ek hou weer by die hotel stil, weet nie hoe ek daar gekom het nie. Ek het tred verloor met tyd en met die werkelijkheid. So I become aware of the surrealness of what I am busy with. A mind wandering state. My brain's way of handling the overwhelming stress. So basically what is happening here is he's distancing himself a little bit from reality so that he can cope with what he's doing. I go and place the cupboard in the caddy, close the door, and camouflage the cupboard with the plastic and masking tape. I park at the hotel again. I don't know how I got there. I lost track of time and reality. Gaan soek is sy ingang, kom terug na die Volkswagen. Kassi op die kruiers trolley. Stoot het na die hotelkamer. Een tuinier leen op sy hark en kyk na my. Sy leen nog net so. Plastiek versichtig af, kasteerkies oop. Ek sal haar moet vou om in te pas. So, go and search for a side entrance. Come back to the Volkswagen. Cupboard on the trolley. Push it to the hotel room. A gardener leans on his rake and watches me. She is still lying in the same position. Plastic carefully removed. Cupboard doors open. I will have to fold her to fit in. Ek raak vir die eerste keer aan haar. Haar vel is koud. Rigor mortis het ver gevorder. Sy is stijf, so dat ek met my boos tegen haar rug beur en haar knie met my hande nader trek. Ek sien paars rooi vlekke op haar rug. Haar haar het tegen my wange nees. I touch her for the first time. This is now the dead woman. Her skin is cold. Rigor mortis has progressed far. So guys, basically what happens is when somebody dies, their body becomes stiff. It's like um, a chemical process. And then you can't bend them that easily. So this is now what has happened to this body. She is stiff so that I have to press, press against her back with my chest and pull her knees closer with my hands. I see purple red marks on her back, her hair against my cheek and nose. I kruik parfum in a bikie dood. Naaruit wil my oorval. I druk dier. Sy is swaar. I trak haar oor die bed. Keer nie betuid so sy dof op die vloer val nie. Die knipmes van haar lichaam gaan weer oop. So I smell perfume and a bit of death. Nausea wants to overcome me. I push through. She is heavy. I pull her over the bed. Don't stop her in time as she falls on the floor. The jackknife of her body opens, uh, opens again. So obviously he folded her to fit into the cupboard, but now as she falls on the floor, her body folds open once more. 
Ek sleep haar tot by die kassie, ek stwee om haar in te kry. Die deurkies wil nie toe nie. Ek moet die maskeerband gaan hol. Ek weet ek lyk skuldig, vervaard, my gesig rooi van die inspanning. Tap terug, omhul die kassie weer in plastiek. Druk die lip van die trolley onder die kassie. I drag her to the cupboard, wrestle to get her in. The doors don't want to close. I have to go fetch the masking tape. I know I look guilty, afraid, my face red with the effort. Walk back. Cover the cupboard in plastic again. Push the lip of the trolley under the cupboard. Guys, I want you to please just notice something about the way that this is written. Um, often these sentences don't have a subject. So the, in plaas of hom te sê, ek stap terug, sê hy net stap terug. Hy sê nie, ek omhul die kassie weer in plastic, nie, hy sê net, omhul die kassie weer in plastic. So I want you to please think about what the effect is of this. He doesn't use proper Afrikaans. There isn't always a verb or a subject in his sentences. How does this make you feel while you're reading this? Does that have an effect? Sikkel om die kamer dier oop te hou. Eindelijk in die gang af, by die sy dier uit. A stem, hier raag langs my, so dat ek skrik en skree. Excuse me, neer. Die tuin nie, kan ek hou? Nee, dankie loop ek haastig aan, oorverdovende refrein in my kop. Hy is een getuie, hy is een getuie. Struggle to hold the room's door open, finally down the corridor, out of the side door, a voice, right next to me, so that I get a fright and yell. Sorry, sir, the gardener, can I help? No, thank you. I hastily walk on, with a deafening refrain in my head. He's a witness, he's a witness. Ek begrawe haar in die veld, 20 kilometer uit op die reddersburg pad. Sop nat gesweet, leenend op die graaf met toe oor, staan ek vir die oomlik langs die graaf achter die wilgerbome. En ek sê vir haar, ek is jammer. Halfpad terug Bloemfontein toe, verbrand ek die kombuiskassie, die plastiek en maskeerband, saam met haar handsak, kleren en stevels. Die rook is dik en zwart van die plastiek, my oor benauwd in alle richtings, dit gaan aandag draai. Ek gooi die graaf in die sloot net buiten die stad. I bury her in the, in the veld, 20 kilometers out on the Reddersburg Road. Drenched in sweat, leaning on the shovel with closed eyes, stand next to the grave behind the willow trees for a moment and tell her I'm sorry. Halfway back to Bloemfontein, I burn the cupboard, the plastic, and the masking tape with her handbag, clothes, and boots. So he's destroying evidence now. The smoke is thick and black from the plastic. My eyes anxious in all directions. It's going to attract attention. I throw the shovel into a ditch just outside of the city. Hi, Robby omhels my weer as ek vir hom gaan sê alles is gedoen en dan heil hy uit verlichting en rous as een kind. Ek sê hy moet dit alles so gauw moendlik probeer vergeet, dit was nie sy skuld nie. Robby embraces me again as I tell him everything is done and then he cries from relief and roar like a child. I tell him he must try to forget about all this as soon as possible, it wasn't his fault. Ek sal graag van jylle wil weet, groot twaalfs, of denk jylle dat niks van hierdie Robbie's skuld is nie. I'll ask you at the end again if you think nothing is Robbie's fault. Hy knik net, en veer die trane met die hems my weg. Dan gaan stoort ek, betaal vir my kamer, en ek raai, hy is toe. Ander kan Winburg, hoor ek die loei van die sirene achter my. Ek sien die politie voertuig in die spiel, die blau lichte wat draai, angst verlaam my, alles is verloore. Ek oorweeg dit en door die verskrikkelijke oomlik om die sitplek gordel los te knip, die stierwiel te plik om die kerrie te laat rol. Ek sien nie kans vir die vernedering nie, maar ook hiervoor is ek nie dapper genoeg nie. Ek hou langs die pad stil, die motor flits voorbij, dit was nie vir my nie. He just nods and wipes the tears away with the sleeve. Then I shower, I pay for my room and I drive home. After winter, I hear the wailing of sirens behind me. I see the police car in the mirror. The turning blue lights, angst numbs me. All is lost. I consider in that horrible moment to clip my seatbelt loose, pull on the steering wheel to make the caddy roll. I can't face the embarrassment. But for this, I am also not brave enough. I pull over on the side of the road. The car flashes by. It wasn't for me. I self and lie by the full stars in by Kroenstad. Unbekende nummer. I answer with a ja. Is dit Len laten gaan? Ja. Jij is die bestuurder van Robbie de Weer. Wie praat nou? Mijn naam is Jeff Maria. Ik is een privaat speerder. Ik onderzoek een zaak van een jonge vrouw wat na de Weerse concert weggeraak het. 
kan nie wees nie. Ek sterf, ek sterf mal. Daar was gister aand 400 mense. Nie gister aand nie, sê hy, verlede week in Appington. Ek verteenwoordig haar ouwers. Ek sal graag met hom wil gesels. Oeh, so the plot thickens. My cell phone rings at the gas station near Kronstadt. An unknown number. I answer with a yes. Is this Len Lattachan? Yes. You are Robbie DeVere's manager. Who's speaking? My name is Jeff Maria. I'm a private investigator. I'm looking into the case of a young woman who went missing after DeVere's concert. Can't be. I'm dying. I stutter. There were 400 people last night. Not last night, he says. Last week in Uppington. I represent her parents. I would like to speak with him. Dit is adrenalin, daar die wonderkier die kids opkikker wat my red. Dit veer die uitputting weg. Om tyd te wen, om tot verhaal te kom, vraag ek, Appington. It's adrenaline, that magical cure, the instant stimulant that saves me. It wipes away the exhaustion. Remember guys, so he has been up since... Like the day before, he was sitting at his computer one o'clock in the morning, still working when Robbie called him. So he's been awake for a very long time. To win some time, to come to my senses, I ask Uppington. Dis raag, sê Jeff Maria, die privaatsbeerder oor die telefoon. Haar naam is die stel verwee. Sy het verlede soldagse concert bijgewoon. Sy het volgens sy vriendinne obsessie gehad met die weer. Sy wou hom ontmoet. Sy wou, haar plan was geloo om alleen saam met hom te wees. Achterna, Om 17 minute oor 11 door die aand, het sy vir een vriendin een SMS gestuur, waarom sy gesê, hy het my gekies. That's right, says Jeff Maria, the private investigator over the phone. Her name is Estelle Verwey. She attended last Saturday's concert. She had, according to her friend, an obsession with De Vere. She wanted to meet him. She wanted... Her plan was apparently to be alone with him. Afterwards... At 17 minutes past 11 that night, she sent the friend an SMS in which she said, he chose me. Oorlevingsdrang maak al die ou instincte weer wakker. Ontken, zwaai twyfel, lig fijn, val aan. Was jy al by Robbie de Weer concert, meneer Maria? Nee, maar dit is nie die punt nie. Ek laat hoflike verontwaardiging in my stem kry. Dit is die punt. Meer as 70% van sy gehoor is vrouwe met een beheptheid vir hom. Robbie is een introvert, meneer Maria. Hy skaars 20, hy skaam en skichte. Hy teken hulle series, hy skryf hulle een boodskapie en dan dink hulle hulle is uitverkoren is, terwyl hy nie kan wacht om alleen in sy hotelkamer te gaan wegkryp nie. Hoe oud was die stel verwee? Survival instinct awakens old instincts, deny, make them doubt, lie well, attack. Have you been to a Robbie de Vere concert, Mr. Maria? No, but that's not the point. I let polite indignation creep into my voice. That is the point. More than 70% of his audience are women with an obsession with him. Robbie is an introvert, Mr. Maria. He's barely 20. He is shy, very shy. He signs their CDs, writes them a message, and then they think they are the chosen ones. While well, he can't wait to go and hide alone in his hotel room. How old was this self away? Okay, guys, and that's where I'm going to end it for today. I'm going to put three questions on the group for you. I would like you to respond on the group. You do not need to write them down in your books. That's not necessary. As long as you can just respond on the group. 